seats. Stay standing though as we're going to welcome up our pastor to give us the word of God tonight. It's great having him back as after having a week away. So why don't we welcome Pastor Chris? Thanks, Maddie. Thanks, everyone. Grab your seats. Oh, it's good to be back from holidays. Sue and I just came back from five nights at Byron Bay. Yes. And like 10 days in Toowoomba. And, uh, and then, a, then a few nights at Hillsong Conference, which was absolutely exceptional. A uh, sold out conference. I think over, over the week, there's like 30,000 people. Uh, Christians on site, worshipping Jesus, absolutely amazing to be part of that atmosphere. And, uh, and so we've come back from that break really fresh and I personally, I am really excited about this next season of church life. And uh, I guess while we're at the conference, you know, one of the things that hits me every year without fail, you get in that atmosphere with just all these people gathered with one sort of intent, and that is to worship God and pursue His will for their lives and make a difference in their world. And it is just the most incredible environment to be in. And, uh, and I want to encourage us in this next season, I reckon God's going to do some great stuff. I've already got two whole series lined up to teach into. We have got some really incredible songs and some ideas for creativity. We're going to have a brilliant season in the life of the church. And, uh, and far from falling into some sort of winter slump, we are absolutely going to rock it here and get ourselves inspired, fired up, changing the world in Jesus' name. So can I encourage all of us, to be here and, uh, and to get your friends where God can touch their lives. And, and even if you know someone who, you know, you, you do life with them and you know they're part of the church and you don't see them for a little while, hey, why not be a real Christian and contact them and make sure they're okay? Because, you know, stuff takes people out all the time in life. So let's have each other's backs. And, and if you do connect and the only reason they're not at church is because they're being slack, then uh, I want to encourage you, go around behind them, get your leg back like this and give them a really big boot right up the backside and tell them to get in church where God can touch their life. How's that sound? That's good. Let's do that kindly. I mean, do it, do it in a Christian kind of manner. You know what I mean? Like, as you say it, say in Jesus' name, as you do it. Like, I don't know how you can redeem that. You know I'm joking, don't you? Because there's always someone who takes that literally. Um, and of course, Heart for House season, it is going fantastic. Um, at the beginning of the week, uh, it was around $46,000 that has been contributed so far. So thank you, church. That is absolutely phenomenal. So we're almost a third of the way to our target. So let's keep believing for what that's going to do uh, in the future, uh, in the development of the life of the church. So cool. Well, tonight... Uh, I want to speak to us about the critical nature of maturity. The critical nature of maturity. Turn to the person next to you and say, grow up. Come on, has everyone done it? Come on, let's do it again. Try it again. Warren's not game to say it to Kate. I'm looking across there and he knows that he'll get adjusted. He'll get an attitude adjustment if he says that. Um, I could say, now, now turn to the person that you just said that to and say it nicely. See, I thought I could trust you with that level of maturity, but, but obviously there's some immaturity here because I heard a few people go, grow up, just love, delighted in the ability to, to say that. So just a quick definition, a couple of definitions of maturity. The state of being mentally and emotionally well developed and therefore Responsible. I'm trying to look for someone who's not, and I can't really see anyone. Um, being responsible, capable, listen to it, of behaving like an adult. Maturity. If you look at it with trees, it's actually ready to bear fruit and be productive. Come on, who wants to be ready to bear fruit? 
and productive in their life. Who would like to be, I mean, as much as we want to have fun, who would like to be capable of being responsible and act like an adult? It, there is benefits to that, I can tell you. And so uh, tonight, I want to look at one simple scripture, Luke chapter 2, verse 40. And it's about Jesus. And it says this, And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Maturity. The critical nature of maturity. And I look at that passage and the first thing I think is, wow, this is talking about a kid. He's 12 years of age when this is written about him. Actually, this is all we actually know about 18 years of Jesus' life. This is all we know. We know more of, you know, the, we know a little bit of the first 12 years, very little bit. A couple of years in, and then we revisit it at 12, and then we sort of pick up the story at 30 years of age. But this was 18 years. All we know about it is these three things. But guess what? It was enough. If we don't have a big list of things that were going on in Jesus' life, all we know is that he grew up, that he grew, that he actually was strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And so I want to look at these things because, hey, if we want to grow up and be wise, grow up and be mature, grow up and be productive, grow up and be fruitful, then really there's some great keys here. The first thing is that he was strong in spirit. And Jesus himself says in the book of John, chapter 6, It is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So when I think about strong and spirit, I guess my take on it is that he wasn't ruled by the emotional or by the physical, but in, in every way he was coming from a much deeper place in life. It's so easy to come from, you know, the surface. It's so easy to be affected, to be moved, whether it's emotionally or just moved in the moment. And when you're moved in the moment and you move from a shallow level in your life, often the results aren't great. But Jesus was coming from a much deeper place. So the question is, what drives you? You know, what do we consult when we're at a crossroads, for example? Ourselves, (laughs) our feelings, our fears, our own smarts in some sense. And the fact is, those things all have a place. I mean, God gave us a brain for a reason. Those things all have a place. But the final authority should always be what seems good to the Holy Spirit. And we need to make decisions and move through life based on convictions that are way deeper than just the surface stuff that our world throws at us. Because my goodness, our feelings and our thinking, it, it, it changes like the wind. It depends on which television show you watch next. So we've got to come from a deeper place and be strong in spirit. So I want to encourage us tonight, determine to develop your life so you come from a place that's deeper than just your next great thought. Some of those things are inspired and some of them were last night's pizza. So we've got to come from a deeper place. You know, for example, I'd encourage you, don't just change things because of seeming opportunity in the moment. I've seen this happen again and again. For example, people changing towns, changing jobs, changing situations, just because there seems to be an opportunity. The fact is, God may well be in that. But I've seen enough people go chasing rainbows who just end up spinning their wheels in life. Man, if God's got you planted somewhere, you really want to know that it's God before you move. You've got to come from this deeper place of conviction and a sense of what God wants 
If you really want to have the productive and fruitful life that God has got for you, sometimes, you know, sometimes, some people, sometimes they just move because they're frustrated or they're bored. But you know what? Sometimes the ability to stick through frustration or boredom, you know, that's actually what grows you up. That is what maturity is. Oh, I'm so what? I don't feel great about my situation, but I'm solid. I know where God's got me. And this is just a season. This too shall pass. And then life will move on. Come on, let's grow up and come from somewhere deeper than just our thoughts and our emotions. Second thing it says about Jesus is that he was filled with wisdom. As a child, think about that. Filled with With wisdom, starting at 12, on into, obviously, all of his life, but the story picks up again at 30. You know, wisdom could be defined as the correct, in its simplest form, the correct application of knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge aren't the same thing. Scripture juxtaposes them all the time. Knowledge is one thing, wisdom is another. And we could simply define wisdom as the correct application of what you know. So actually, if you don't turn knowledge into wisdom, it will turn into pride. Paul says knowledge puffs up, actually brings arrogance, just the fact that knowledge is there. And, uh, and I guess I, I look at it as an example. Some scholars scoff at the thought of faith in God, but cannot understand why their personal lives and relationships are a mess. They might be the smartest people in the room. It doesn't mean that they exercise wisdom. And I want to set some uni students free. Have we got any uni students here to, tonight? We've got a few. I want to set you free tonight. Before you listen too much to someone with knowledge, check out what they've built in their lives. At uni, don't be intimidated. Look for credibility in life, not just in letters after their name. Proverbs 24 verse 3 says, Through wisdom. A house is built, and by understanding, it is established. And so I just encourage you, come on, let's build our lives with wisdom. It's not that hard. Just apply what you do. You don't need to know everything. Just use what you've got well. Use what you've got well. And I guess I I see it probably uh, uh, regularly. It's very, very frustrating at times. But sometimes you, you know that people have got the answers, but they don't just use it to get ahead. And it's always a sad thing, always a sad thing when people don't apply it. I guess I see that every year we do a relationship series. Every year we do a relationship series. Actually, I've been thinking of not doing it because we've just got too many babies happening. Honestly, Johnson and Johnson are going to write to us and complain that they can't make enough baby powder if New Hope keeps having kids the way it's having. No, that's not true. We love, we love the kids. But you know, every year we do the relationship series and every year some people take that advice and go on and build fantastic relationships. But every year as long as we've done it, someone will totally ignore the knowledge that they've got and get burned. And the only difference, everyone's got the same knowledge, the only difference is some people choose to apply knowledge properly, to apply their, apply their knowledge well, and they reap the benefit of it. And some, it doesn't matter how much knowledge you've got, knowledge will not save you. It's that simple. Last thought, yeah, okay? I just really felt that was speaking to something. No, I didn't going to say someone over here, someone over there. I just wanted to make you nervous. The grace of God was upon him. Okay, So he was strong in spirit. He was filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. And I really find this amazing. Although he was divine, Jesus, God, 
His human limits required natural process. He, the grace of God was upon him. He still had to catch up, if we could put it that way. Is there anyone else here that feels like the unspiritual side of you is always playing catch up with the more spiritual side of you? Come on, we've all got it. We've all got like this old nature that we're dealing with. And sometimes it's like, man, that's like two people living in me. And Paul even said this, the Apostle Paul in Romans 7. And he he was so frustrated. He's like, I'm a wretched man. The things that I want to do, I, I just can't seem to do them. I know, like on the inside, there's one half of me that knows what's right and I struggle to do it. And the things that I don't want to do, the things that that spiritual part of me understands, that is not good, that's not where you want to go, but I find myself still doing it. Is there anyone here like that? Don't put your hands up. Because that's all of us. That's all of us. That is like the paradox of the human condition. But I love this word grace. The grace of God was upon him. The Greek word charis, and it it literally means gift. You know, God gives you a gift of the ability, and he empowers that ability for change. In our lives. That is one of the greatest gifts God's given us. And uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, I love this. It says, and it's a very short passage, verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Do you know that that's possible? We, we have this paradox because, as I said, there's the The one part of us that really wants to do well, there's the other part that seems to sabotage it. And we just need to understand that when we come to Jesus, I wish everything just got fixed, but it's not. But you are given a position as a child of God. And here's the good news of that. You are declared a child of God. You are declared righteous before God. It's a position. And because you didn't earn it and because no one else gave it to you, no one else can take it away. That's who you actually are. That's I am who you say I am. But there's another reality, which is practice. Actually practicing who we are. And we've actually got a Practice that. We've got to walk that out. We've got to live the life that we've been given. We've been given the life. We've been given freedom. We've been given forgiveness. We've been given a brand new start. We've proclaimed a whole new creature in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And now we get to practice it. And it's awesome to stand there and say, you know, you are, I am who you say I am. Uh, and then Monday, we've, we've got to try and practice who we are. And, and, you know, that can get painful and that can get frustrating. But I want to encourage you, you have got the grace of God. Because this pattern, this isn't just about the Son of God. If this is how Jesus grew, it's how we grow. If this is how he matured, it's how we mature. And the grace of God is upon you. This gift from heaven for change is there. And we just have to to walk in it. And when it comes to maturity, you know, the definition, I guess, of, of Christian maturity has nothing to do with how long you've been around, how long you've been reading the Bible, how much of the Bible you've read, how many church services you've attended. It's got nothing to do with that. But true Christian maturity can be measured in the length of time it takes between when God speaks and we obey. It amazes me because that's sometimes really new believers, new Christians, sometimes they behave way more mature than people who've been around for decades. Simply because there's this spark in the heart that just wants to honour and please God, is ready to shift in a moment, and God speaks, and you step into it. And so I want to encourage us, you know, 
the, the potential is there for all of us to grow up. Just as the potential is there for all of us to stay mature. And it doesn't matter how old you are, you can be incredibly immature. It doesn't matter how young you are, you can be incredibly mature. If you just stay strong in spirit, determine to let your spirit lead you. And determine to, to apply knowledge, whatever you've got, apply it well. And, and determine, I, I'm going to keep moving forward by the grace of God. Even though I'm living in what seems to be a contradiction, I'm just going to keep receiving grace. And I'm just going to keep moving forward towards Jesus. And nothing ain't going to stop me. You will experience the benefits of maturity, which is fruitfulness, the ability to be responsible and to build your life in a way that honours God and brings great benefit to you and to others. So I've just got a couple of questions to ask us as I close tonight. Here's some questions for us. When I'm making decisions, does my spirit have right of way? As I said before, am I coming from a place of deep conviction or are just my emotions and physical circumstances and the voices of friends and the voices of media, is that what is de determining my direction in life? Or am I actually strong in spirit and determined to make decisions from the core of my being and what God has done in me? Am I solely relying on my natural senses and urges or am I willing for God to interrupt my plans? That's a great question to ask ourselves. The second question, am I applying the knowledge I have in ways that build my life. And, you know, as I go, through, go through this, I mean, I guess all of us could probably go, yeah, I need more of all of that. But I want you to pick one and just focus on that. Can we do that tonight? Like, don't be overwhelmed with all these things we might need. But generally, in any message, generally, there's one thing that stands out. There's one thing where literally we could say that's the lowest plank in my barrel. You know, you think of the old, old wooden barrels and they've got all these planks and rings around them to hold them together. And the fact is, the, it doesn't matter how long some of the planks in that barrel are, the water level is always restricted to the height of the lowest plank. So what is the lowest plank for you tonight? And I want to encourage you, just pick that one and work on it. So this second question, am I applying the knowledge I have in ways that build my life? And the third question, are you letting God work in you for change? Are you really open to that? Are you letting him work in you for growth? Are you letting him work in you for maturity? And so I'm encouraging us all tonight. Let's, could we just determine to grow up? And I, I know we're all on different stages of the journey, but I tell you what, I need to grow up. I struggle with this stuff too. I struggle with being spirit-led. I, I know how strong it is for surface things to try and affect the decisions you make and the perceptions you have. So, you know, for me, it's like, yeah, I know I need to determine to be strong in spirit. I need to make that recommitment to be filled with wisdom. It's so easy, especially in this day and age, to gather knowledge like no other generation. The access we have to knowledge is without parallel in the history of mankind. But the temptation is to ignore the stuff that could really help us because it seems inconvenient or it seems hard, a hard decision to make. But tonight I want to encourage us, you know, and particularly if that's that plank in the barrel for you, just make a firm decision tonight. You know what? I am going to start applying. I know what's right. I know what works. I've got to start doing it now. 
you know, and obviously, finally, grace of God. Can we make that decision that, you know what? I have got what it takes to change. God's given me a gift of grace for change. The grace of God is is not just upon Jesus Christ. Because the grace of God was upon him, the grace of God is upon us. And we have the power. You might think, man, I am powerless. I've got these things that I struggle with. Actually, it's not true. It might seem that way, but that's actually not reality. You know, so much of what the the Bible tells us to do, like be renewed in the spirit of our mind, it would be unfair for God to tell us to do that if we didn't have the ability to do it. And I want to encourage us. Whatever the plank in the barrel is yours, I want you to grab it, put it in your heart, and would you stand with me? Let's stand together. You doing okay? Doing okay? Does this make sense? Simple message. Does it make sense? Isn't it amazing? All like scripture, I think I'm falling in love with the Bible all over again. It's unbelievable what's in a little verse that could change your life. Could anyone see that your life could change if you put any of this into practice? And so I want to pray for us tonight. And uh, Father, we just all recognize what is perhaps the lowest plank in our lives tonight. And we come to you and we thank you for your grace. We thank you that you give us the power to decide, to change. Once we commit our heart to you, sin doesn't have power over us. Even our own emotions and circumstances don't necessarily have power over us. It is always within our ability to choose how we respond. And so tonight I pray for people, Father, whatever plank of the barrel, we've identified in our own lives. I pray that you'd help us with it. I pray even right now that you begin touching our hearts in those areas, begin showing us the way forward in those areas. And we make the quality intentional decision to move toward you and to move into maturity tonight in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Just Let's just stay in this moment for a few more moments. I hope that you have this sense of what God's doing in your heart right now. What he's put his finger on right now, just through that simple little message. I really pray that you activate that, that you move forward in that, because that could bring tremendous change, that brings tremendous productivity to your life and fruitfulness personally. And while we're here in this place and just in this holy moment, you know, if, if God and if church, Jesus, if that's not your experience, but you're here tonight, however you got here with a friend or with family or whatever, I really believe that you're not here by accident for a start. I, I just, I think God's very intentional in the way that he positions people. And if you're here tonight and, and that's not your experience, but you want it to be. I know for me, when, when I became a Christian at 21 years of age, it was mainly because Some of the things I've been talking about, that wasn't my experience and that's what I wanted in my life. You know, I just felt totally out of control. Like my life was not uh, stable. It wasn't in any sense, you know, in control of anyone, let alone me. And the thought of God getting involved in my life, just to me, it just seemed awesome that he'd be willing to, that he could forgive, that he could help me start again that he could begin to direct my steps. You know, the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And the fact that God wanted to do something about my situation, that blew me away. And you might be here tonight just in the closing moments of this service and that's not your experience, but you want it to be. So while every head's bowed, please, every eye's closed in this place, I'm going to ask you to do something really simple. If that's spoken to your heart and you're like, Pastor Chris, that's me, that's... 
That's what I want to experience. I want Jesus in my life. I want to know what it's like to be forgiven. I want to know what it's like to live from a place of deep conviction. I want to know what it's like to be able to apply Bible wisdom. I want to know what it's like to have the power to change that God gives me. And if that's you, why don't you just shoot your hand up in the air right now, right where you're standing. No one's looking around, but right where you are, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to pull you out, but we are all there going to pray a very simple prayer and I'll give you the opportunity to dedicate yourself to Jesus tonight as we all do. So if that's you, would you just raise your hand right where you're standing. I'm only going to keep this going for a moment, but I do want to give everyone a clear opportunity to respond as I look across this place. Fantastic and awesome. Okay, look up at me and, uh, and I encourage you, we're all going to pray this prayer together. And, uh, and I encourage you, if I didn't see your hand, you know, you might have just done this or something like that. Maybe just in your heart, you're like, my heart's racing. I know this is right, but I'm just not ready to do that. I still want to give you the opportunity to simply join us in praying this prayer in faith. So why don't we pray together? Dear Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life. And I'll follow you. Amen. And you know, one of the most amazing things about journeying with Jesus is, is that's how easy it is. It really doesn't get any more complicated than that. You don't have to know everything. You don't, you know, you don't have to become religious. Religious people kill Jesus. Remember that. So that's not what God's expecting of you. He's just looking for simple faith. And so it never gets any harder than that. And I want to encourage you tonight. Maybe you were just on the edge of making a decision to follow Jesus. I want to encourage you. You never regret it if you give your heart over to God. So you think about that process that this week. And um, Pastor Sue's going to come and talk to us. So why don't we welcome Pastor Sue. Isn't she wonderful?